In the previous videos, we've been running an application called IDLE, which is technically an integrated development environment for developing and running Python programs. And when it starts, it provides us with an interactive environment. And that's what we're looking at right now. This is what we've seen before. There's the interactive prompt, the three greater than signs, and we haven't paid attention to it, but there's a title of this window that's Python Shell. So this is one way in which we can enter Python code and have it executed, but there's another way that IDLE provides, and we want to talk about running stored programs in this video. As a reminder of the behavior of this interactive environment, let's just issue a couple of print statements. Let's go with print hello as one print statement. As soon as I hit return, that is interpreted, passed along to the Python interpreter. It executes that statement, and we get the output of hello. And let's issue another print statement and with an argument of world we get the output of world. Now these two print statements may constitute an entire program. So what do we mean by a program? Let's just define that very loosely. Let's say a program is equal to a collection of statements to accomplish a desired goal or task. If all you want to do is print hello world, then a print statement or two may constitute your entire program. So while we're at it, I often use the word code, computer code, Python code. Well, what do I mean by that? This has nothing to do with secret codes or encryption. Instead, when we say code, we generally mean expressions or statements within a computer language. So again, just loosely, we can think of code as being some portion or even all of a program. So I might say something like, well, consider this line of code. There we're just talking about a single line, or how about when we run this code, and there we're talking about running an entire program. Now, returning to those two print statements, if our entire goal was just to generate the output, hello world, then those two print statements constitute our entire program. But what if we wanted to modify the output a little bit? Or what if we wanted to run this over and over again? Well, we'd have to start from scratch, type everything in again. So there's another way that we can enter our Python statements, and this will be to put the statements in a file, and once we're done putting everything in there, we could say, okay, idle, pass this along to the Python interpreter. So that's what we want to explore next. To store our commands to a file, we start by going up to the File menu in idle. Click on that. The drop-down menu has an entry called New Window. We could click on that. Uh, later on, we'll be using keyboard shortcuts. So on a Mac, this would be Command-N on a Windows machine. It would be Control-N. And as soon as I click on this, a new window pops up. And it's titled Untitled. And notice there's no interactive prompt now. Those three greater than signs are not here. Now, let's enter some code in this. Let's enter our little hello world program, but I'll start by writing this is a comment, just to get a comment in there, and when I hit return, nothing happens. And let's put the first print statement in here. So print with an argument of hello, and hit return, nothing happens again, and we'll have another print statement in here with an argument of world. Close that down and I'll hit return. Still nothing happens. And that's because we're no longer in the interactive environment. These commands will only be interpreted or executed 
when we explicitly tell idle, okay, we're done, our commands are ready to go, now pass these along to the Python interpreter to be interpreted or executed. Okay, so we have our complete program in this window called untitled. Those are the same print statements we typed in interactively. So interactively, we've already run this program, but now to run it, idle won't just let us run it directly from this window. Instead, it says you have to first save this to a file. So in order to do that, we can go back up to the file menu click on that and then there is the menu entry save or we could hit command S or control S depending on your operating system. Let's do that and up pops a save window. There's a default directory that's provided and usually that's your documents folder. That's good enough for us. So I won't bother to change the current directory but we're being prompted for a file name. Now Python files, we want to have them end with an extension .py, but we can give it any name we want. I am just going to give it the name foo, just chosen arbitrarily, .py. Once that's entered, we click on save, and notice now that the title of the window has change to reflect the name it was given, we see both just the file name, foo.py, as well as the complete path to the file. Once we've saved the file, we can run it, and in order to do that, we can come up to the Run menu and click on Run Module, or we can hit the function key, F5. So I'll click on that now, and what happens is the window with the program we just entered, that foo.py file, that's moved to the background and we're brought back to the interactive environment. We see this announcement that there's been a restart and we also see the output from our two print functions that were in our program. As for the restart, it will be a little clearer later, but we, if we had done things like created our own functions or saved values and variables, that would have all been lost. Python is starting now as if we started by running our program and that's the only thing that's been entered so far. So anything entered above the restart is lost. Now the nice thing is by having put our program in a file, if we want to change it in some way, we don't have to start from scratch. So we can just go back to that window, modify the code, resave it, and rerun it. So we want to bring that window back to the foreground. There's a Windows menu where we could select that foo.py file and bring it to the foreground, or we could just come here and click on it to bring it back to the foreground. I'll do that. And let's come up here and modify the text in the first print statement. I'll make it hello there. Let's throw in the optional end argument. I'll say end is equal to a blank space and then dropping the cursor down to the world print statement. Let's add an exclamation point to make this rather emphatic. Now I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts, the command S to save this, and then F5 will run this. So this will bring back that Python shell window, and uh, the window we're currently looking at will be pushed back to the background. So here I am hitting function F5. Now we see the announcement that there has been another restart, and this is followed by the new output that's been produced by this modified code.